Alrighty, we're recording now. Hi, I just wanted to welcome you if you're watching this live or if you're watching it um, at a later date. Uh, this will be posted to my blog, uh, hopefully tonight, maybe tomorrow, depending on how long it takes me to upload it. Um, technology, yay. So um, just to kind of, we got a little bit of a late start so I was having some, some issues with audio, but I'm gonna try to get through my outline and everything pretty quickly. So I just want to talk a little bit, um, for those who don't know me, um, I'm Jennifer Vatza. I have a small side business, Restorative Aromatics. I'm a certified aromatherapist and I also dabble in perfuming, incense crafting, uh, soap making, shampoo bars, um, and herbalism. So I'm a little bit of a Jill of all trades, so I do a, lot, a little bit of everything, but it all kind of ties together with what I do with the products I make and, and the different types of educational things that I do, like this video. So um, I just want to talk a little bit about perfume, perfuming and fragrance aspect of what I do. So as an aromatherapist, I started dabbling around with making um, perfume rollers over the summer. And, you know, just doing like basic three to five different types of oils. And I found that I had a real natural proclivity towards picking different types of oils that really worked well together and created really amazing uh, fragrant aromatic blends and kind of fell in love from there. And I started experimenting more with, you know, looking at, you know, how to do, make like a spray perfume, you know, your colognes and your perfumes and your eau de toilettes and, and things like that. And, you know, the internet's great, but it has its drawbacks when it comes to, you know, finding a recipe or formulation for making a proper, you know, fragrance product. And there's, there's a lot of knowledge that goes into that, um, that, you know, you might not be aware of. Like, in the course that I'm taking through the online perfume school, like, most commercial fragrances probably are a combination of about 200 different ingredients from essential oils to fragrance oils, uh, ar aroma chemicals and isolates and things like that. And I'll get a little bit more into what some of those other components are as we go through um, this, this video. So that's kind of where I started and I just, I love learning. So I'm constant at any given time I'm taking you know, three or four different courses and working on different programs and experimenting and creating products. So I really got into advancing my skills in fragrance creation. And one of the things I think that's really powerful when we look at fragrance and whether that's all natural, whether that's, you know, synthetic or a combination thereof, is that not only does aroma have the power to evoke emotions and memories, so when you smell something, you know, you, you get a feeling about it, whether that's, you know, it's some sort of therapeutic trigger based on the chemical composition of like an essential oil, like, you know, lavender is high in the monoterpene alcohol linalool, which is, which promotes relaxation, which is why lavender is in a lot of uh, products for that type of thing. So, you know, when I smell something like jasmine, which is one of my favorite, favorite aromas, I love it. I probably use it a little too much of everything, but when I, when I smell jasmine, you know, thinking about what type of images, sounds, feelings, temperature, even music that comes to mind when you smell something, because our sense of smell is a really powerful sense that we have. So I feel like when I smell jasmine, I just feel like a warm kind of late spring, early summer day. It kind of reminds me of being a child in my grandmother's backyard and that sweet smell of flowers in the air. And you know, the color tone with it, like I feel like this sort of, when I visualize jasmine, I feel there's this sort of yellow cast tint, like a glow to it. So it's really interesting to think about something when you're looking at aroma to think of it in a way that because you can't see it, you can't hold it, you can't, you know, well, you could technically taste it, but you know, it, it, it's just a different way of sensory processing. So that's one of the things I found really interesting as I've been working through my uh, perfuming course is really thinking about the sense of smell 
and how we smell things and what different types of things those, those aromas bring up for us. So that's just a little intro into uh, the big world of fragrance and perfuming. So what I wanted to talk about, I broke down in my outline. So there's different types of fragrances. So typically, and I have some stuff behind me, which I'll be grabbing at different times. But typically, you'll have the three main areas when you're creating like a perfume is you have your spray perfumes, which you'll have, a, a, I have my little spray bottles. So you'll have an eau de cologne, an eau de toilette, toilette, I never say that right, an eau de parfum. And the difference between those, and I'll get into that a little bit more, is the concentration of the fragrance materials in the perfume. So what you can do with this, um, and typically a spray perfume is made with um, perfumer's alcohol, which I have some behind me. Um, now perfumer's alcohol is a denatured alcohol. Like when I first started experimenting with recipes online, they're like, oh, you know, just use a high proof vodka or whatever. You really want to use a denatured alcohol. And what that means is that it's a non-drinkable alcohol. So, you know, don't just go to the store and get some Everclear or, or whatever. I mean, you could, but you know, uh, it, it's better to go with the, the perfumer's alcohol. Um, one little side note with that is that if you're creating uh, perfumes to sell and need to buy larger quantities of perfumer's alcohol, you do need to get a permit for, uh, for that. Um, so I think you can, you can buy up to about five gallons a year, but anything above that, you need to have a perfumer's permit, which you get through the alcohol and tobacco tax trade commission or something, or administration, something like that. Um, I can post the link to it, but it's free, but you know, you just fill it out, fill out a form online and it takes a little while. So the main areas that um, we're going to look at with creating a spray, your, your, your kind of traditional perfume is, and I'm going to give you an example of this. So for a for one ounce bottle of fragrance, so if you were creating an eau de cologne, so one ounce is about 30 ml, so you would want to have... Uh, 1.5 ml of fragrance, and that's a blend of your essential oils, fragrance oils if you're using them, or any aroma chemicals or isolates, and then 28.5 ml of perfumer's alcohol. And sometimes you can add a little bit of distilled water in there to kind of make the alcohol, because the perfumer's alcohol doesn't have a strong smell to it, but it does have an alcohol smell to it. And eau de toilette is, is uh, you would use three, three ml of your fragrance materials and 27 ml of perfumer's alcohol and the perfume, you would use 4.5 ml of fragrance and 25.5 ml of perfumer's alcohol. So the next type, um, which is where I started, um, I create, I do perfume oils in the little, I got these really pretty little kind of gradient, gradient, gradient uh, roller bottles on Amazon, and I usually do, I prefer to use jojoba oil or fractionated coconut oil for two reasons. Um, they both have a really long shelf life, so they won't go rancid, and, you know, they don't have a strong odor to them. Like, I had made a few in the beginning with uh, sweet almond oil, and even though I made them over the summer, they really smelled not good now. And sweet almond oil has a longer shelf life than some of the other ones, but you know, you wouldn't want to use like an avocado oil or sesame oil and God forbid neem oil, which smells like garlic. So you really want to go with something that doesn't have a lot of a natural fragrance to it to begin with. So I usually use that. And for a 10 ml bottle, um, I usually will use maybe about 25, 30 drops of the fragrance blend in that with that but it, it all depends on how strong of an aroma you want so that's that kind and the other type is you can make a solid perfume or a perfume balm and i put them in the little uh, aluminum tins and this is just a blend of beeswax and jojoba oil 
And I use usually the best recommendation that I can give for that is I do a, a one to three ratio. So I will do one ounce of beeswax to three ounces of jojoba oil. And you can adjust that um, as you're going, as you're working with that. And again, you know, the fragrance for that, you know, I would use, again, you know, if you're doing one, a, a one ounce tin or a two ounce tin, it, it depends on how much, how strong you want that to be. So those are the three main types of, of when you're creating a perfume that you want to, that are, are the most commonly made. And usually if you're looking at selling them, um, the price points are different, like for a roller or for a solid perfume, it's a much cheaper process because you're not using as much fragrance and you, the perfumer's alcohol can be kind of expensive or more expensive than say, you know, getting some jojoba and beeswax. Um, I just ordered a gallon of uh, perfumer's alcohol and the cheapest I could find for the gallon was about $60 and an additional like $25 in shipping because <laughs> there's restrictions and stuff as to how they can ship uh, alcohol and a gallon is heavy. So there's that. So now I wanted to talk a little bit about the two primary things that go into constructing fragrances. And when I talk about fragrances, I don't just mean perfumes. You can create a fragrance that you use in a body lotion or soap or shampoo bar, any, any type of DIY product that you're making. So the two things when you're you look at that is you have fragrance families and you have fragrance notes and the notes that kind of break up into two parts. Excuse me, because when you when you look at and this go, even goes into aromatherapy as well with essential oils is you have your top notes, your mid notes or heart notes and base notes. So your top notes are going to be like citruses. They're going to be very kind of light. But with the top note is they evaporate much quicker than the mid or base notes do. So that's gonna be the first smell when you spray a perfume that you're gonna smell. You're gonna smell your lemon or your orange, you know, those, those real kind of uh, fragrant top notes. And when you're looking at constructing a fragrance, you kind of wanna have a mix of all three. You don't wanna do just top notes or you're gonna be having to put that perfume on all the time because it's just gonna keep evaporating. And you don't wanna be all base notes or all mid notes. So you wanna have a nice kind of construction there. So your mid notes are like the heart of the perfume. So the mid notes are gonna be what is there after the top notes kind of burn off and evaporate. And they're gonna last several hours longer than those top notes. And typically the floral uh, notes, your roses, jasmine, all that, that, that's kind of what makes up the heart of most fragrances is those, those mid notes. So base notes usually are the more deeper, heavy, kind of re resinous aromas, and they last a long time. I mean, those are like your resins and woods, you know, even things like vanilla or frankincense or myrrh, benzoin, things like that. They really, they kind of pull down the fragrance. So when you kind of think of it, it you know, as to how a, 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 an aroma will open up, your top notes uh, will obviously be at the top. And yeah, that's what you smell first. And then you kind of have the wave of the middle notes and the wave of the base notes. So, um, Oh, sorry, there was a question. Talk about this. Um, yes, I am going to go into fragrance oils and essential oils. Um, I was just going to talk a little bit about the fragrance families, and that's going to get a little bit into, and the fragrance notes, and that's going to kind of start touching a little bit on the difference between fragrance and essential oils. So fragrance families, um, there's different areas in which a, a fragrance is sort of clustered or categorized. So you have you know, your oriental classifications, which are usually sort of your balsamic, resinous, they have an exotic, spicy aroma. Um, typically they combine animal-like -like notes with florals and woods. And these would be sort of like amber, clove, frankincense, and vanilla. So you also have fougere, which is, uh, fougere is I think French for fern, 
So they have a very sweet top notes, but also spicy and balsamic base notes. And they tend to, the Fougere fragrances tend to be a little more masculine. Um, there is a little bit of a, in recent years in the fragrance in this industry, um, breaking away from gender classifications of fra fragrances. Um, so things are a little bit tend trending more towards being unisex than being, oh, this is a feminine fragrance and this is a masculine fragrance. So some can, you know, kind of be a little more in either area. Um, you have the florals, which are, is the largest uh, fragrance uh, family and classification. And that's everything from like gardenia, jasmine, rose, lily of the valley, ylang ylang, violet, and all that. And then there's also some subclasses of florals because it's such a big area of the fragrance industry. So you have your fruity florals, your white florals, spicy florals, and that also depends on what else they're blended with. You have your citruses, which obviously made up the citrus family. Um, I never pronounce this right, Shipra, which is um, a classification. Shipra is, I think, French for Cypress. So these refer to fragrances whose materials come from that area, like labdanum, uh, benzoin, bergamot, oak moss, patchouli, and vetiver. And um, through my course, there's also um, what she talks about as like an abstract category, which is sort of a niche category where it doesn't fit in all those other ones. Um, it goes into abstract. So um, I talked a little bit about fragrance notes, and this is kind of important before we really go into discussing the fragrance oils and uh, essential oils is there's different sort of, again, sort of categories and classifications of different types of aroma. So you have your aldehydic notes and aldehydes are a chemical component of essential oils. They come in different plants, but what that is in the fragrance and the, they are going to be all synthetic or an isolate uh, of a particular uh, plant or chemical. So, but they're going to give it that sort of fresh, soapy kind of aroma. And I find in, in fragrances that that's probably what makes them smell a little chemically. Um, there's a lot of different types of fragrance oils and isolates. And I tend to not like fragrances that smell like chemicals. And one of the reasons I got into making my own fragrances is when I go in and smell perfumes, they don't smell like anything to me other than chemicals. I'm like, I want something that I'm like, oh, this, this, you know, the patchouli and this is amazing, the citrus and this, and, not, and smell something and be like, this is 200 things that I don't even know what is supposed to smell like. So moving on into the fragrance notes, the next classification is the animalic notes. And this is one area where I do prefer synthetic fragrance oils. So that, because the animalic notes a lot of times are derivative of animal products. So they come from, uh, you know, civet, castoreum, ambergris, labdanum, even though it's, it's a, a plant, gets classified in the animal like notes, and your musks and leathers and things like that. So that is uh, one area I would much per prefer to get a synthetic than have something that comes from an animal. As an ex-vegetarian, you know, I do care about those things. And you have your balsamic, you, you hear that whenever I, it took me a little while to get used to when people would describe notes as being balsamic, because I'm thinking balsamic vinegar. <laughs> but no, the balsamic and van vanilla notes are those deep, resinous, a little bit of sweet, but you know, like benzoin, uh, frankincense, apopanax, which is a sweet myrrh regular bar, Peru balsam, and vanilla. So those are those base notes that are really gonna give some depth to your fragrance. You have your citrus notes, which are those light top notes. Um, your floral notes are broken down into different subclassifications. You've got your jasmine notes, which is usually jasmine absolute or jasmine sambach. Um, you have your Mouget notes, which Mouget, I think, is French for Lily of the Valley. And those are very soft florals, but they're also all synthetic. So there are some classifications that are just specific to fragrance oils. And you have your narcotic floral notes, which are kind of have a sweet, heavy fragrance, like Neroli and Ylang Ylang. 
and your rose notes, which includes geranium and rose. And one thing I was su surprised to discover, um, you know, when you're looking at different types of even just essential oils and, and the way that they're produced, like rose essential oil smells very different than rose absolute. Like rose absolute smells so much more like what rose, what I think of when I smell rose. And the rose essential oil is just a little different uh, and not as, I don't know, it's just not as intense. But as I've been experimenting with, uh, one of the projects that I'm working on is sort of looking at the longevity of how long a scent lasts. Like the Rose Absolute scent lasts days. The Rose essential oil scent, for as expensive as it is, does not. <laughs> and some of the, what, what I mean when I'm talking about an absolute is that that is a solvent. Uh, they extract the oil from the plant material by using a solvent, usually alcohol. Um, instead of steam distillation. So it's just a little bit different of a process. But also the absolutes, at least for Rose Absolute, it's a lot cheaper than Rose Essential Oil. Like a little 5 ml bottle of Rose Essential Oil can run between $100 and $200, depending on where you get it. Whereas the Absolute is probably like half that. And you also have your Violet and Iris notes. And that's Violet, Iris, uh, also Carrot Seed. Um, you have your Fruity Notes. Um, usually fruits are going to, non-citrus fruits are going to be synthetic, like your berries and things like that. The only exceptions are black currants and osmanthus. Um, so anything that you see that's like strawberry, blueberry, that's all synthetic because you can't extract the oil from any type of actual natural material from those. Um, you have your green notes, which are which can be kind of pungent, and to me, they smell a lot like vegetables, um, like uh, what was the one? Galbanum, which is a resin. Um, you know, sometimes when people say, "Oh, this smells like something," you're like, "Yep, now I see that." Now, um, I think my the person who's instructing the perfuming course said it smells like like fresh green beans. I'm like, "Yep, it smells like fresh green beans," and violet leaf, um, not violet flower. Violet leaf is very pungent. Um, so, you know, as getting to understand, you know, the different types, like if I was going to use violet leaf in something, I did try it and I'm like, I used way too much. Um, you know, if something is really pungent, you don't need much of it. So there's hay notes and that's like helichrysum and tonka bean. They're very light and sweet. Uh, you have your herbal notes, which is probably, you know, the things that everyone's much more familiar with, like lavender, rosemary, thyme, the things you would kind of find in your, in your spice cupboard, you know, those, those type of herbaceous notes. Your minty notes are going to be refreshing and clean, like that includes like your eucalyptus, your peppermint, spearmint, all that. Uh, there's mossy and marine notes, which are also kind of pungent, like oak moss, seaweed, and tree moss. Um, oak moss, just as a side note, uh, it, it's, a, I believe it's an absolute, but it's not really used for anything other than perfuming. And there's a lot of restrictions on using it in perfuming because it causes skin irritation. You have your spicy notes, which again, are kind of a little bit of that culinary base. Um, you know, black pepper, nutmeg, coriander, cinnamon, clove. Um, there's this, so we talked about violet and iris under the rubric of the floral notes, but there's also the violet and iris notes, which are more green notes because they're not so much from the flowers, they're more from the leaves and roots and things like that. So they're a little more earthy smelling. And then you have, lastly, you have your woodsy notes, which is, you know, like your cypress, cedarwood, sandalwood, patchouli, and vetiver. And again, those are sort of more of those base notes that are really soft and earthy. I love them. I, I was a little skeptical of the woodsy notes when I first started um, working with essential oils. Like, I hated vetiver. The first time I smelled vetiver, I think I threw the bottle away. I hated it that much. Now I love it, just in moderation. When I'm making something and I want to put vetiver in it, I literally will use like one or two drops. Don't need 20 drops of vetiver because all you'll be smelling is vetiver. So, moving on a little bit, um, I'm just keeping an eye on the time. So, the tools that I recommend if you're creating fake fragrances, whether you're going to use them for, for, for perfuming or you're going to use them in skincare products or soaps, things like that. I have some of them, excuse me, behind me. 
So what I use, where did I put it? What I use when I'm creating a fragrance is I get little perfume vials. I think these are 2 ml. Um, you can get them on Amazon. I think I may have gotten these on Vetiver Aromatics. So I use these to blend small sort of tester uh, ones. So I'm not using a lot of fragrances. Um, if I was going to say I love this blend, I want to make like a bulk batch of it, is they sell sort of amber bottles. These are four ounces. I probably would go with something a little smaller, like an ounce or two. Um, and then I can use this to add to whether I'm making a solid perfume, a perfume roller, or a spray perfume. I've got my sort of master bottle there. As far as, um, oh, I also recommend, I got these through Vetiver Aromatics. Oh, sorry, it's a little bright in here, but they're little uh, perfume recipe cards, which really kind of is helpful for when you're working on actively working on something because it also has on the back a list of ingredients how many drops you're using whether it's a top mid or, or base note so you know you can kind of keep all that on there and it's also got you know your fragrance name what the description is is it fruity floral is it woodsy is it spicy and what your inspiration is for that when you're creating something you know it's it's what am, why am I making this scent? What, what, what is the purpose of it? And as I've been developing ho like holiday lines and things like that, you know, starting to think a little bit more like, okay, when I think of winter, what aromas come to mind? What, what feeling do I want to evoke through that? These are good things to have on hand. Um, I love and hate plastic pipettes. The environmentalist in me hates them because these are single use plastic pipettes. You really can't reuse them. But when you're using fragrance oils, most don't have droppers in them the way essential oils do. So you do need something to kind of pull out the, the fragrance oil with. Um, that's, I also keep a lot of smelling strips. So when you're looking at, you know, sampling your fragrance rather than just, you know, sniffing the bottle, putting them on a smelling strip is really good. And then you can also see how long it lasts. Like if I put a fragrance on here, I can put like the date and time and then periodically check it. I'm like, what is it? It has a smell an hour from now, six hours from now, a day from now. Um, and it's good for also comparing and contrasting. So as I'm working through some of my course materials, I can be like, okay, Jasmine Absolute and Jasmine Samba. Here's three different brands of, of Jasmine's. How do they all smell different? How do they all smell similar? These are really good to have for that. Smelling strips, the packaging. I usually go with the two ounce, I think these are two ounce, uh, I the wrong label on it, but these are two ounce bottles. And I think I got these on Amazon. I did get some smaller ones. I think these are like one ounce, but I'm gonna explain to you two very important things here. Um, so some perfume recipes are going to call for you to dilute the perfume base in like a, a glycerin or a dipropylene glycol. What you're going to, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see at the top, it's a little, the oil's kind of floating there. It hasn't, the way this is with, it, this is just distilled water and the perfumer's alcohol. So I find when you add something like glycerin, it kind of adds a weird weight and it also can make it kind of milky looking. So. And one important thing when you're making perfume and smelling them, um, I don't know if you can see these, but I keep coffee beans around because coffee beans are a great nasal palate cleanser. So when you're smelling a lot of things, you, you kind of, you can get fragrance overload. So taking a little whiff of that sort of refreshes your, your, your sense. Your sense of scent. <laughs> and I also keep, um, there's different types of, these are good for samples of perfume. These are just little spray atomizers. I got these on Amazon. Uh, we talked about the perfume rollers before. I like these ones a lot. Um, what else do we have? All right. Oh, I also recommend getting a good digital scale, one that measures not just in a whole, like one gram, two gram, three gram, like you know, 1.13 grams. So this one, this is a pretty good uh, digital scale. Uh, I think it's by Amir, A-M-I-R, and I got that on Amazon. That was like 11 bucks, so can't beat that. 
And my favorite thing, and these come free with a lot of different things, is little funnels of different sizes because when you're using, you know, the little vials or, you know, different types of perfume things, having these little funnels is a lifesaver so you don't spill your perfume materials everywhere. Um, it's also good to get a set of graduated cylinders for when you're mixing things. So when I was talking earlier about, like, if you're making an eau de cologne, where you want, you know, one point, this one doesn't have, they're smaller ones, but if you wanted 1.5 ml of your fragrance, and then however much of your, of your perfumer's alcohol, you can easily measure it in here and then put it into your bottles. So, oh. and these just arrived right before I started this is, um, what is this called? Seal Art Film. It's a, they actually, it's like a medical film, but you use it to put around the roller bottle so it doesn't leak if you're selling if you're selling them or shipping them anywhere. So those are kind of the basics um, beyond, you know, your fragrance oils and, and essential oils of just some of the, the little materials that you'll need. There's not a lot that you need to, and of course, perfume, there's alcohol. There's not, you know, a lot of, you know, you don't need a lot of fancy equipment and things like that to get started making perfume. So the big topic that I want to talk about, and we're, I'm getting, we'll be wrapping up shortly, so this is the last kind of area I want to talk about, is using natural synthetics and aroma chemicals to create your fragrance. So I primarily work with essential oils as an aromatherapist, but I did over the summer start experimenting a little bit with fragrance oils when I was first starting uh, making some soap, doing soap making and shampoo bars. And because I found when you're doing something that's really bulk like that, first of all, essential oils are expensive. Fragrance oils are very cheap. Um, you know, this month, you know, a bottle that's this big of Nag Champa was like six bucks, whereas, you know, a bottle like this of, you know, sandalwood is like 50 bucks or more. So they've got their benefits. Fragrance oils don't have any therapeutic value to them. They are just simply there for olfaction purposes. So. I use, I usually use them in combination and I am very cognizant when it comes to using fragrance oils because I don't, I use like maybe one or two, maybe three, you know, I don't have, you know, a blend that's like 25 fragrance oils, 25 essential oils and a bunch of things. I tend to be a little more minimalist in that area because I feel like sometimes it gets to be too much. So that's one area there. So just to recap a little bit, essential oils are the organic compounds extracted from plants and they, they have therapeutic properties to it based on their chemical composition, which is the chemical, the chemistry of essential oils is a, is a much longer story. But, you know, these essential oils come from flowers, stems, leaves, roots, resins, grasses, bark, and the fruits of various plants. So... And those, and just to kind of touch briefly on it, the, the chemical constituencies of an essential oil, they can have hundreds of different chemicals in them. And that is what influences when you're using an essential oil for an arom aromatherapy blend, is that's what influences their therapeutic value. So fragrance oils, and I see this, this topic has come up a lot. Um, and I understand it from both ends of the spectrum is fragrance oils are a combination of natural and synthetic produced oils in a lab that mimic different aromas as you know, some plants don't produce essential oils or fruits and things like that. So like, I love the smell of lilacs and lily, um, neither of which produce, you can get, I think either a CO2 extract or an absolute of lilac. Um, I impulse bought one for $160, a tiny little bottle, and it doesn't smell like anything and is hard as a rock. So I haven't used that, but I will use the lilac fragrance oil, which I absolutely love. I use it in soaps uh, a lot. But, you know, for me, it's important to really consider why I'm using a fragrance oil. And the most important thing uh, is that they're phthalate or phthalate free. And phthalates are the industrial chemicals that are used as solvents in a lot of cosmetics and personal care products. 
And studies have shown that they can damage the liver, kidneys, lungs, and reproductive systems. Um, there's a lot. Um, I just actually, right before this, I just finished up watching uh, the documentary called Stink on Netflix, which I highly recommend because it does talk a lot about synthetic fragrances and their effects on the human body. So it is really important if you're going to use fragrance oils that they're, they're phthalate free and come from a re reputable source. Um, I only buy fragrance oils from Brambleberry and Vetiver Aromatics because they are phthalate free and, you know, not just coming from, you know, anonymous lab in China somewhere. So, and if you want to learn more about the effects on phthalates uh, or phthalates on human health, uh, there's an extensive amount of information on the CDC's website about it. So the ingredients of fragrance oils are going to be some, they do include essential oils. They also include aromatic chemicals and essential oil chemical compounds. So, or components. So what that means is like your citruses are all, all like 95% comprised of a chemical called limonene and what they might take limonene and put that as part of the fragrance rather than using lemon and orange and grapefruit. So that's sort of when they're talking about a chemical isolate, that's what they're talking about. Or an aldehyde or there's hundreds of different, I can't even pronounce half of them, uh, aroma chemicals. I haven't really experimented with that as of yet. Um, while I have used fragrance oils, I haven't gotten into the chemical aspect of it, which I, I don't know. I, I, I have mixed feelings on it at this point. But one of the things that is important, because a lot of, because even in the documentary I just watched, they were talking about, you know, how there's no testing and no this. Um, <clears throat> fragrance oils and essential oils, you know, there's uh, the International Fragrance Association, IFRA for short, and they test. Uh, I believe they, oh no, they, uh, sorry, it's RFIM, the Research Institute for Fragrance Materials. They're the one that tests everything for, you know, skin irritation, absorption, flammable, that kind of stuff. But IFRA will give you a set of guidelines. So like I mentioned earlier about oak moss being not used as much because it uh, can cause skin irritation. So when you're looking at fragrances sometimes, and there are restrictions in different countries too, uh, where you can't use, they won't, you can't sell certain fragrance or have those in, in the fragrance. So let's see, looking at my notes. So fragrance oil suppliers should follow the IFRA guidelines. So when you're buying a fragrance oil, you know, it should have been tested. It should have been, you know, you know, knowing that, you know, if there's a possibility towards skin irritation, because essential oils have a lot of safety concerns with it. And one area where I'll use when I'm creating a fragrance is to use an example. I love the smell of cinnamon. I love cinnamon, anything. Um, but cinnamon bark essential oil is very caustic and is a skin sensitive and causes skin sensitization. So you can't use a lot of it. So, you know, you might only be able to, within the frames, use a couple drops of cinnamon bark. You know, it might cause skin irritation, it might not, but that's an area where I would prefer, because I'm not using it for therapeutic purposes, I'm using it purely for aroma, where I would prefer to use it for, as use the fragrance oil. And the same thing with like clove. So something that is going to be really caustic and have some safety issues, I might use the fragrance oil in its place. So that, that's just one area where some things are a little interchangeable. Um, yeah, so I hope that answers some of the questions about fragrance. I did write a, sort of a longer blog post about it recently, um, just because there's, there's so much where I, like I feel, oh, oh, fragrance is the new secondhand smoke and things like that. There's a lot of hysteria around fragrance, synthetic fragrances, and some of it, I, you know, when it comes to you know, all the top toxic chemicals and things like that. I totally get that. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's not an all or nothing thing. There, there is a lot of gray area and a little middle ground. And there's things, I think that, I mean, like I said earlier, I think that, you know, you can use both fragrance oils and essential oils when creating 
fragrances, uh, whether it's for a perfume or for a product. Um, you know, it comes down to what you're comfortable with. I mean, if you want to go the all natural route and just use naturals, essential oils, that's great. <laughs> a little more expensive, but great. Um, because there are some that, uh, what was one? I think I got a synthetic agar wood. Um, so the synthetic was maybe 20 bucks. A five ml of agar wood essential oils, probably about $350. So, um, you know, sometimes it does come down to cost. And so that kind of wraps up a, the, the sort of intro area of what I wanted to talk about in perfuming. And I do some resources that I wanted to share. Um, as far as supplies go, Brambleberry is amazing. I order, they primarily, I do a lot of soaps, soap and cosmetic stuff. So if you're making soaps and various types of things, I mean, you can get all your carrier oils there, soap bases, all that stuff. But they also have a really great selection of fragrance oils, whether it's a single note fragrance or something that's a little more their own kind of fragrance blend. Um, and they also sell essential oils too. They have great, and they do a lot of uh, bulk uh, pricing as well. So, you know, I have a big block of like 25 pounds of uh, goat's milk <laughs> soap base. So I really like them. Vetiver Aromatics are amazing. They've got a really great selection of fragrance oils and essential oils. You can get perfumers alcohol there, but I think the largest uh, bottle they have is 32 ounce. And they do have supplies. I think I got the vials there you can get. Uh, perfume bottles and some other things. Um, Perfumers World is another one. I ordered a few things from them. Um, they are Vetiver and Brambleberry, both in America. Uh, Perfumers World is in Thailand, I believe. So the shipping's a little slower, but they have like all the aroma chemicals and uh, fluorescences and synthetics and other supplies. So um, I just placed a small order with them. So I should get that at some point in time. I don't know how long it takes to ship from Thailand to here. Um, CreatingPerfumes.com is a great resource for getting a perfumer's alcohol. Uh, at least they sell at least by the gallon. Um, there are other resources, um, which I've just started kind of looking at that where you can get it in larger quantities than a gallon, but so it's that I mentioned as far as perfuming education goes, I highly recommend the online perfume school, the intro to perfuming online course, uh, which runs a few times a year. So uh, I just started, uh, let's see, October. So I think it's like October to January. And then maybe after that, there's another cycle of it starting. Uh, I mentioned IFRA, which is the International Fragrance Association and RFIM, which tests the fragrance materials. So you can look at their websites and see, you know, just kind of get a little better understanding. And as I mentioned, the, I highly recommend the documentary Stink. And that is on Netflix. Um, I think it's about an hour and a half, but it was a really interesting watch. Um, kind of thinking about fragrance and, and also not, not only fragrance, but like the synthetic chemicals and things like that, that were, that are used. And that. So, um, oh, and one last thing. I, I, do, I do recommend this book uh, by Karen Gilbert. She's the one who runs the online perfume school. It's funny, I bought this book like right before I enrolled in the course. I was like, oh, I didn't realize I ordered the book by the person teaching the course. But this is a good intro. Uh, it goes over a lot of what you know, we talked about, understanding these fragrance families and classifications. And there's a lot of, you know, some really great recipes and, and formulations for getting started with making some perfumes and stuff on your own and understanding sort of the history of perfume and all that good stuff. So, um, just about wrapping up, I did want to make a, a special notice to, um, as I've been building my business, I'm now doing a free bespoke per, uh, perfume creation a consultation, phone consultations. So if that's something you're interested in, you can go on my website, restorativearomatics.com. And I believe on the homepage, if you scroll down, there's a little through Acuity scheduling. Uh, you can select, uh, or you can contact me any other way, but you can select that and we can talk about what a bespoke perfume is, is basically it's a custom scent that's made just for you. 
So if you'd like something that is patchouli and that champa and, and blood orange and, you know, really sp spicy and smoky and resinous, and you can't find anything that's like that out there, um, you can have something created for you because that's kind of what brought me into perfuming. I just don't like a lot of the perfumes that are in the stores. Or I like them for a little bit and I'm just like, eh. You know, I just, uh, yeah, I just moved uh, recently and I like found bottles of perfume. I'm like, wow, I bought this 11 years ago. Why did I buy a cucumber perfume? I don't even like cucumbers, but I still have this gigantic bottle of perfume. Um, and you know, when I smell those things now, having gotten away from that, it just, I don't know. They just didn't have that rich sort of, I don't know. But that's something. And I also wanted to mention um, all of my products in my Etsy store are 20% off until the end of the year. And that's restorative aromatics on Etsy. And that includes my perfumes and all my other products that I have. And I'm always adding more. So um, yeah, again, thank you for watching. Um, if you're watching live or if you are tuning in later, I'm going to post this to my blog. And the next uh, call, uh, Zoom call I'm doing, hopefully with less technical problems with sound, uh, will be uh, Sunday, December 9th uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And that's going to be about shampoo bars and soap making, getting kind of started with that. And um, I look forward to talking to you then. Have a great evening and rest of the week. Bye.